Hi, it's the 15th of October in the year 2002. My name is Kevin Seafang and I am pleased to present a short video of the ancestors and descendants of George James Seafang, who arrived in South Australia from London in 1854. The video traces a direct line from George James to Jamie Seafang, my grandson. It also covers four generations of Seafangs who have lived in London from 1750, having migrated from Germany. We can trace the Seafang family history back to the 1700s. George Frederick Seafang, who was born in Germany and moved to London in around about 1750, settled in the Spitalsfield area. He married, had five children, and his firstborn son, Christopher Frederick, is our next in line. The Seafang family worked as tailors, this being the only occupation that did not need an apprenticeship. They lived in areas like Crispin Street, and when things were going tough, they moved to places like Petticoat Lane. Christopher Frederick was a successful businessman, owning his own printing business. He married, had eight children, and his sixth born, George Bond, is our next in line. George Bond was also successful, being the secretary of the Lloyd's Register of Shipping. He lived in comfortable circumstances, as this house will show. On a recent trip to England, Hope and I visited the site of this old home. We also visited the office of the Lloyd's Register. Whilst Hope and I were in England, we met many of the Seafang family who are domiciled there. Here we have Elsie Seafang with her son George and his wife Frances. Another house where the Seafang family lived for a short while. Frederick Seafang and his wife Gladys who live in the Bexel area. Their daughter Angela was their first contact with the English people. Eileen Lancaster, whose grandmother was a Seafang, is shown here with her husband John. George Bond had a large family, 13 children, and two of his sons, George James and Reginald Henry Seafang. The two brothers decided to migrate to Australia. George James was an educated person and whilst in London worked at Bank in South London as a clerk. He left London docks aboard the sailing vessel Hindostan on the 3rd of February 1854, arriving in Port Adelaide on the 23rd of May in the same year. After arriving, he lived for some time in Port Adelaide and eventually found work as a clerk working in the Hart's Flower Mill, a building which is still there. His next move was to move north to a small country town called Watervale in the Clare Valley. It was in Watervale that he opened a small business and began work as a butcher. He met and married Ellen Sullivan, an Irish lass who had migrated to Australia and settled in Clare during the Great Potato Famine in Ireland. They were married at the St Mark's Church, Penwortham, another small establishment just north of Watervale. They decided to move to Moonta, but not before two of their sons, Christopher Frederick, my grandfather, and Walter George were born. George James owned two bullet pins and worked in a carrying business in the Muta area. George and Ellen were Christian people and attended many churches in the Muta locality. Almost all of their children would have attended this school, the Muta Mines Primary School. 
It must be remembered that George James settled in Moonta long before the opening of the copper mines. And when he died on the 22nd of September 1911, he was one of the oldest, if not the oldest person in Moonta. Reginald Henry Seafang arrived in Australia in 1861 and visited his brother George James in Moonta on his way to Port Pirie. This was to be the last time they were to see each other. George and Ellen's family consisted of nine children. However, three of these children died at birth. Christopher Frederick, born in 1858, my grandfather. Walter George, born in 1861. Sydney, born in 1869. Matilda, born in 1878. Alice May, born in 1873, and Eugene, born in 1875. For the details of George James Seafang's immediate Australian family, please refer to later videos.